gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, mice and birds. Uh, this will be the singular performance of this year's orchestra. Uh, the nice thing about the orchestra is I never know ahead of time what it's going to consist of. I know there'll be dulcimers. I know there will be both dulcimers, at least one. I didn't expect an entire violin section, and we are gifted with a cello. And as the same goes, there's always room for a cello. two pieces for you, both from a Celtic repertoire. One is an 18th century piece, the other is 19th century. This first one is called Caitlin Terrell. I found it in a book by Edmund Bunting called The Ancient Music of Ireland. They had a harp festival in Belfast in 1792, and the folks who put on the festival hired Mr. Bunting, who was the church organist in Dublin, to come and write down everything the harpists played. Amongst the 11 performers, there was only one who still played in the old style. When you've seen people play the harp, like Lorinda, she plays in a continental style. The right hand mostly plays the melody, the left hand plays down here in the companies, if she does arpeggios, they, you know, they come up like this and all that. The Irish harp at the time, the Gaelic harp, a very different animal. The box was hollowed out of a solid block with very heavy brass strings. It was played with fingernails. You plucked it. When you plucked one of those strings, those strings sustained forever. <laughs> So the technique of playing the harp involved selective damping and plucking. So when you watch somebody play it, it looks like this rather than this. And they held it on the left shoulder and it kind of looks like this. In this arrangement, what you will not hear is boom chick, boom chick. <laughs> what you will hear is running lines interweaving. So I tried to capture the idea of O'Hamsey's style in his heart playing in this arrangement. Okay? The second piece we're going to play is a medley of two pipe tunes. One's called The Sky Gathering, the other is the 90 Seconds Farewell to Aberdeen. <laughs> Had it not been for the British Army, the Highland Bagpipe would be on the dustbin of history along with kilts and all that traditionally Scottish stuff. Because they took it into the army, by the end of the 18th century, nobody wore a kilt. First because of the clothing ban, also because it's kind of impractical for being in town. Today, the saying in Scotland is, you're married in a kilt and you're buried in a kilt. And other than that, where they sell all the tartan is over here. <laughs> Sky Gathering. They didn't have pipe bands before 1840 because you don't have, didn't have pipe makers who all made chanters that were tuned the same. You want to have all the instruments tuned the same if you got 40 of them playing together. Right? Um, so, pipe bands date from the 1840s and these are all band tunes. The Sky Gathering is a gathering tune, meaning the piper plays this to tell everybody to assemble. When it was used as a march, it was a ceremonial march in a very slow and stately tempo. Okay? The 90 seconds farewell to Aberdeen is a good old march tune. You needed good old march tunes because every soldier was carrying 60 pounds of gear. Okay? That's it. You're, it's on your back, 
and you need something perky to keep you going. Believe me, anybody here been in the Army? Ever carry less than 60 pounds in the field? Nope. It hasn't changed. It's the same today. It's just better gear. Okay? So, you will hear us do the sky gathering and the 90 seconds farewell to Aberdeen. Um, we'll do our best to imitate all these instruments for you with the assembled masses. Here we go. The first one, Caitlin Terrell, taken from the plane of Dennis O'Hamsey in 1792. <laughs>
like to thank you all for coming, and I'd especially like to thank everyone in the orchestra for showing up and the amazing amount of very hard work they have done all week to learn all this stuff. You know? They learned it, they performed it, it's wonderful, and you guys did great. Okay.